Hello everyone and welcome to game two of this King of the Desert uh, matchup between Cloud and Leary. Last game going to Cloud, I believe. Leary will be playing as the Berbers this game and Cloud will be playing as the Mayans. So, let's take a look at the maps. We have a desert-like Arabia with plenty of ponds. I love the ponds. Nah, I absolutely hate the ponds. They're pretty entertaining to watch games with the ponds because they're pretty uh, force-aggressive games. But, uh, man, does it suck when you have the, all the ponds and your opponent doesn't. Anyway, that's enough talking about the ponds. Leary, he's got a wood line over to the right side. Gold in the south. Uh, berries over to the west. And a bunch of other resources to the north. Pretty exposed map. Kind of what you expect for a, uh, a wet Arabia, if you will. You can wall it in through here. You can wall it in through here. He did get a little assistance from those cliffs. But it's not a very nice map overall. His opponent, Cloud, in the teal trunks. Woodline to the south, half decent. Areas are safe. Stone is kind of safe. Golds are opposite of safe. They're pretty bad. They're very exposed and they're forward. So both players need uh, not having the best map. If you're the thing is, if you're if you're Larry, you could potentially wall this. I feel have your military buildings nice and uh, nice and safe. If you're Cloud, you kind of want to place your military buildings in front of your gold. That's gonna be really tough to place this far forward. Good night, Gluttony AOCC and next week. Let's talk a little bit about the Civ matchup. We have Berbers and Mayans. Uh, the Mayans, traditionally, one of the uh, best civs on Arabia. The Berbers, though, they got that secret weapon, though. They, the secret weapon is going to be that Genitor. Maybe the Camel Archer, too. But, um... Man, who's going to win? Genitor or the Plumed Archer? That's the question that I'm asking myself. Both of them have pretty good Pierce Armor. The uh, Plumed Archer is pretty fast, able to avoid a lot of arrow fire. Benefits of the Geniator, you're able to create them from an archer range. Um, they do have more pierce armor as well. They're a little harder to micro. I was gonna try to steal this boar. It looks like this is gonna be an easy steal. Don't don't take a hit. Don't, don't take a hit. Okay, gonna go right. Yeah, this should be an easy steal for Cloud. And Lear's looking for some stuff to steal on his own. Let's check um, how many of the resources they found. Don't see any sheep laying around. I see the extra four sheep here. So Cloud's got all of his resources. Where's his other boar? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, eagle on six HP. This is going to be so close. The boar is in. The question is, does Cloud save his scout? Three HP. He's going to save the scout. The boar is going to run back. Nah, it's not. Nice play from Cloud. Nice play. It's very hard to steal the boar now in the expansions. The boars do do uh, significantly uh, higher damage to scouts now. So that's going to be uh, 340 food extra for Cloud and 340 food less for Leary. What Leary should do... Well, he's not going to find another boar to steal, so he should go home and lure in these three deer. Leary lucked out a little bit with these three deer. Three deer, if I do my maths correctly, 280, 420, I believe, extra food. Let's talk about which strategy they might open up with. Oh, uh, getting close to the town center, but that's okay. Probably a man at arms rush from both these players. Both players. Well. Yeah, it's gonna be men at arms to rush from both players. Here's gonna go ahead and take these deer. Probably will wall it off through here. At the very least, Larry hasn't had to make Lou, which means the mines don't have as much of an advantage as they normally would. They've been on the same villager numbers this whole game, essentially. And here we go, first engagement of this game. Going to start to come in as these players start to make some militia. I like the walling so far for Cloud. Obviously, it'll take some more investment to get in through here. But uh, it's a work in progress. And these walls should be fairly easy as well. Alright. 
here we go. Barracks coming up from Leary. Azul here. And this is going to be pretty hard for Leary. I, honestly, without that extra food income, Leary's gone up with uh, a standard 22 population. And Cloud's gone up on 23 population, one extra. There's a little bit of that extra food from the deer. Now, if uh, Leary wants to make more than three militia and the men-at-arms upgrade, he's going to have to seed a significant amount of farms. And that'll definitely really slow him down as far as the, uh, the archer transition, if he plans on making it. Not as big a deal as Cloud, uh, for Cloud, though. Cloud's got the, uh, the Mayan resource bonus. He has that extra villager. He had the extra boar. He might have enough food to prevent him from uh, seeding enough farms. So let's see what he does. Got three militia versus four militia. Better arms upgrade's almost done. Gonna take that right there. Where's that better arms upgrade? Where is it? There it is. We got three better arms. The scout's gonna come in. The scout can make the difference here. And I say take that fight. Because you know these militia will eventually turn into men at arms. Take that fight. Villagers coming forward. This is why you like the Berbers. Their uh, villagers move faster. Makes a big difference, actually. Archer range is going to come up in that forward position. What do we talk about? Going to be hard to get this wall up on the front. Tower coming down. This archer range might not get up. There we go. Archer range on 80%. Villager will go down. One villager down. These. Oh my god. Gonna use the villages to take out the tower. Are there any villagers coming forward from Cloud? He's gonna lose this archer range and a few villagers. It's 25 versus 23. Villagers gonna come forward. One of these is injured. Get that tower up as quickly as possible. The additional men at arms is a little bit late. I bet Leary was hurting a bit for food. And Cloud has given up on getting up this archer range. That is about 150, 175 food wa uh, wood wasted. Why that house was deleted, I don't know. And tower is up on two golds and a stone. Great play from Leary. Okay, Cloud gonna... Well, Cloud doesn't have any gold right now, so Cloud's gotta go with some, uh, some skirmishers right now. One archer and a bunch of skirmishers. Uh, where is Cloud's other gold? Cloud's other gold's right here. It's pretty exposed. Not too far from these towers and these men at arms. Got three fresh and healthy men at arms. A single archer to deal with those men at arms. And the town center. Gonna take some shots there. Gonna lose a single men at arms to the town center. Those guys will keep him busy. What is this villager doing? What in the world? Buildings are made out of food. Why, Why not make buildings out of food, you know? That's a huge waste of the men at arms. That's three men at arms down for nothing. It's a great initial play from Leary, but losing three men at arms is losing a lot. Archer range only now going up from Leary. As you see, you need to see quite a few farms to uh, get those upgrades in. Got three in stone for now. So great initial play from Leary. He's got his map control that he wants. He fully walled in that tower, but uh, no follow-up damage coming in. And now is an opportunity for Cloud to hit back. Cloud has the army advantage, and he did get that archer range up. But shouldn't have happened. Shot it. And here we go. Even game as it is right now. Let's see what kind of damage that Cloud can do. Got two archer ranges pumping away. Leary's got a single archer range pumping away. Going up with the stable now. Shot it. And now tower and mining camp going up on the gold. You gotta have gold as the mines. You really want to make those archers. They're nice and cheap. Nice defense from Larry. He's just got barely enough skirmishers to defend. One skirmisher less than Cloud would have been able to push in. Late horse collar from Larry. 
Why is the horse collar late? Because he made so many men at arms. Men at arms cost food, horse collar costs food. Right now, neither player is having Fletching. Fletching's coming in for Cloud. That'll give him the edge. But we got some scouts coming in from Leary. Cloud's still making skirmishes. Cloud, little does he know, he needs to start making archers because there are scouts coming out from Leary. This is a complete surprise for Cloud. And here we go. Two skirmishers will be able to do massive damage. Bill's just going to come in to help out a bit. Still no archers coming out from Cloud. Cloud, finally, enough gold to make some archers. He's only got two on gold. Enough for an archer every now and then, but this archer transition very effective for Leary. Leary's making all those right decisions, I must say. The uh, uh, decision to come forward was very uh, was a very good decision. Decision to um, make skirmishers was a good decision, and now the decision to make scouts. Uh, perfect transitions from Leary. A little bit of this micro, which is uh, why he's not further ahead in this game. But he's playing the game like he should. Now, the question for Leary, how many scouts do you want to build? Always a question. He's got a surplus of gold a little bit. He's only got two on gold, though. We build a tower to make sure it's nice and safe. And for now, Leary's pretty much staying put. What kind of damage could Leary do? Can't do any damage on the gold, really, unless he wants to go all in. Hopefully it's not going to happen. If he gets lucky, he can move around the south, but that's going to take a long time. Move around to the side. Finally! What is, this is like a 1600 boar lure. Nice. 20 minutes in the game. Not going to lure it at all. Too lazy for that. Yeah, if I was Leary in this situation, just make barely enough to defend. Poor fight. Poor fight from Leary. Where did those scouts go? Leary discontinued scouts, but he decided he needs to make some more scouts now. Oh, there's the scouts. Going to do some raiding. Good. enough to do some significant damage. Tower in the wood line, though, preemptively. I was expecting this. And that's not enough damage. I mean, honestly, those uh, scouts would have been better off in the forward position, maybe. Although these these uh, spearmen are kind of useless here. Cloud getting some nice damage in return. The villager count is very different, though. It's 40 to 46. too bad. I feel like Leary's definitely leading this game. The way the civilization matchup should go is that um, in the castle age, I feel like the Berbers should have the advantage, and in the feudal age, the Mayans should have the advantage, and that's currently not the case. Why should the Mayans have the advantage? Well, they have that archer bonus, and they also have a superior economy. One thing we haven't seen in this game, though, I mean, not often you say this in a mezzo matchup nowadays, but uh, we haven't seen any eagles yet. And here they are. Double barracks production happening now. And it definitely would have made sense to uh, see these earlier in the game with the amount of skirmishers that we see, so I think Cloud just forgetting that he gets those things. Eagle Eagle, what is that? My god, those scouts are gonna go to town. And there we go. Army count 13 to 4 now. Five villager advantage for Leary. <laughs> this is gonna be good though if you could uh, weaken up those villagers a little bit. I don't think I agree with this moving in under that tower. I don't know if uh, Leary saw that tower from earlier. There's quite a bit of HP on those skirmishers. They don't have the plus one armor yet. Yeah, it's gonna be a waste of skirmishers. Both players up to the castle age now.
And let's see, we're gonna see full eagles from Cloud. All you have to do is pretty simple for Larry, just go knights. Go full knights into that, and that's gonna be hard to counter. What is your opponent gonna make? Pikemen? Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Nice good. This game's lining up pretty well for Leary. Get some bloodlines, you already have some scouts out. Pretty simple game for Leary. I mean, just go knights. And uh, maintain this position. You maintain this position, you should win the game. Um, one thing to think about, though, is Cloud will have enough stone for a castle pretty soon. Where Cloud's gonna want to place that castle, he's gonna want to place it to regain control of this area. Gonna be a while, though. Cloud currently on zero, uh, on a hundred stone. Shot it, but she can't. What is up with that lumber camp? Nice preemptive walls from Leary. Get some more quick ones here. If he's paying attention, the teal blends so well into the green on the mini map. Okay, Cloud's not gonna pay attention. And Cloud's gonna go back. Too many towers for him. And there we go. Leary survived the feudal age. If you could say that, I mean, <laughs> he's done some pretty good damage in the feudal age. And there we go. Plus two armor coming in straight away. Knights will be out in just a second. And what is Cloud's plan going to be against those, um, against those knights? Looks like it might be Plumed Archers, Monastery. That's definitely the best course of action. And get that castle up ASAP. Now, where does this castle go? Very curious. This gold's oh, going to run out pretty soon. There's only one spot on this map where a castle really makes sense. And got to be right in this area. Town center gonna come up. Oh. The scouts are pretty beefy now. Bloodlines plus two done. Forging coming in too. Here comes the knights across the field. These knights are 15% discounted. Nice raid. Nice raid from Leary. Gonna pick up the scout. Oh, that was close. Just wall this. Why not wall that? A little stone. A little stone as the mines never hurt. A stone here too. This is a beautiful cliff if you, can, if you can use it. There we go. There's that castle. It's the only castle that makes sense. And I gotta say, this castle will never go up if if these knights get in. Which they are right now. This this castle could potentially go up if you place a little stone wall here, though, and a little stone wall here. Knights can't attack through buildings. And it's close, it's close. There goes the foundation. Leary can see it. He's got two scouts here. Is he gonna move in? If he gets in, that might be the GG play. Just get a little stone right here. It's very simple. A little stone. Okay, now put a house. Put a house. Put a house. Put a house. You put the villages on top of Oh Jesus. That might be GG right there. That might be GG. These uh these knights have forging, and there you go, GG right there. Misplays, simple misplays. God damn. That was pretty simple. It was pretty simple from the beginning. Just get a little stone there, a little stone there, but oh jeez. All the great decisions from Leary. He had a few micro mistakes. He lost his men at arms for free. But great decisions from him. Great decision going forward with the tower. Um, taking that fight with the men-at-arms. Great decision with the single-range uh, skirmishers. Great decision transitioning his scouts. And then great decision um, going straight into knights and preventing this castle from going up. Great decisions from Larry. That's really what went into the game. I'll see you guys in game three. Hello everyone and welcome back to game welcome to game three in this best of five series between Cloud and Leary. We have a Meso War. How interesting. This is gonna be Leary playing as the Incas in red. I gotta say I'm loving these colors in the series. And Cloud playing as the Aztecs. Teal really makes everything better. Makes every other color better. 
So, both players picking the Meso civilizations. We all know how strong these civilizations are on Arabia. Uh, Aztecs were previously the king of the, um, the AOC one versus one Arabia scene. Let's see how the Incas are able to stack up to them. The Incas are a little bit, they have, <laughs> they're a little more interesting, I feel. They, uh, they have a really strong tower rush with their towers costing less stone. Their villagers also able to get foraging and the blacksmith upgrades for their armor. So they could definitely, uh, I could definitely promote some unique strategies and also some good defensive stuff. They have a slight eco bonus with having that uh, extra hundred food with the llama and not having to build as many houses. On the other hand, the Aztecs have a significant eco bonus with uh, the plus five uh, farm capacity significantly plus five carry capacity significantly improving their farming. Uh, all the military buildings produce faster, so they have a very uh, strong military. And then they start out with an extra 50 gold at the start of the game. So that means they're able to go for either eagles or a uh, or more militia or met, more men at arms right off the bat. So definitely a very strong rush civilization. Which civilization I think is stronger though against each other? Not really sure. I would give slight advantage to the Aztecs, to be quite honest. But uh, we have yet to see. Oh, don't kill the sheep. There we go. We have a little bit of laming going on from Cloud. Cloud's taking quite a bit of damage on his scout, though. And it looks like he should be able to get the um, get the boar away. The Eagle Scout is very good at laming, of course. And he's going to be able to get that, so... Extra food for Cloud, less food for Leary. Gonna take another shot, though! 6 HP left on the scout. You can heal up in the town center, though. And Leary's gonna might try to steal some of these sheep. Uh, not gonna get it. A nice try. This boar though, completely, completely exposed. Cloud hasn't researched Loom yet. You have to research it now as the Aztec. But Leary might not have seen that boar. No, he just barely missed it. That boar was right through the laning. So that's quite unfortunate for Leary. He's not gonna be able to get that boar if he can't see it. Let's talk a little bit about the maps. We have uh, four, four golds for Cloud, two four golds for Cloud. Uh, deer are very lurable though. One line in the back is A-OK. -okay. And let's see, one stone forward. I forgot where the other stone is. I haven't found it. Both stones are forward, so stone's basically inaccessible for Cloud. Making it a little bit vulnerable to that tower rush. We know the Incas like that tower rush, so we'll keep that in mind. Uh, this area, again, very vulnerable. Again, would be good for a tower rush. We'll see if my prediction comes true. Let's take a look at Leary. Uh, Leary, he's got a decent wood line and a decent forge line. Uh, gold is very bad. Very exposed and very far away from this town center. Both stones are forward. Don't expect an Aztec player to tower rush an Incan player, though. However, he does have three deer. The three deer is absolutely critical for Leary since he did lose that four. Can't understate how important those deer are. Barracks coming up at the 6.30 mark. I'm hoping for a Dark Age Rush. I'm so hoping for a Dark Age Rush. Oh, please. 6.30 is right when you want to make it for the Dark Age Rush. I'm going to be so happy if I see a Dark Age Rush. And same thing for Cloud. Same thing for Cloud. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yes! Oh, my gosh. This makes me happy. Cloud, Cloud, Dark Age Rush or Men at Arms Rush? Come on, buddy. Ah, Men at Arms Rush for Cloud, damn. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna see the classic Dark Age Rush versus the new meta, the new meta, Men at Arms Rush. Why do I call it the new meta? Because all the players are doing it. All the pro players now. There's something with either the new civilizations or the new balance changes with less HP on the buildings um, or the introduction of the Eagle Scout that have made the Men at Arms Rush um, probably the most dominant strategy in the Feudal Age. Although it does have weaknesses, it's not like, you know, not like it doesn't have weaknesses. It's a significantly higher investment than the Dark Age Rush. It's significantly more aggressive. And this is a little bit interesting. Okay, Dark Age Rush versus Men at Arms Rush. Already, 
two militias done. Remember, the Aztecs do create units faster. Not enough for the defense yet, though. These villagers are downhill. Let's see. And that is enough to defend for now, so... Gonna take a good hill advantage, though. I don't know why he backed off that one, though. Ah, bad. Yeah, bad. Nice defense. Nice defense, and Cloud knows he's got the military advantage now. He knows, I just want a good military engagement. I'm playing as the Aztecs. I got that gold already in the bank. I'm gonna go forward and do some damage now. Well, <laughs> goes to show you the power of playing uh, with defensive with militia, I guess. That rush. And it's not gonna be a men-at-arms rush anymore. Actually, it's gonna be forward archery range, huh? Kind of interesting. Forward archery range in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. And these two militias are gonna stay at home. Ah, oh, this game's interesting. Both these players have limited uh, scouting information, so they don't know what each other's doing. Militia are going to move out now. I'm curious to see how this shapes out. We'll have a single archer ready. Uh, there's plenty of gold left in the bank, too. Men at Arms is coming in. They're going to right after the villagers. And archer is out. Alright, good play from Cloud. Double- oh, but I forgot about the eagles. <laughs> Oh man, I'm at a loss for predicting these games. Uh, the meta's changed so so much. Second second barracks and blacksmith coming out. Man. I'm trying to think right now. So, okay, so defensive militia into men at arms seems to counter dark age rush if you play it right. Um. But then you should continue with Militia, because you're against the Meso Civilization. The Meso Civilization is going to go Eagles, which is going to counter out your archers. Man. Trying to understand the game right now. Alright, Men at Arms have Scale Mail Armor now. How often do you see that? Not going to take the engagement though, going to combine up with the Eagle Scouts. We've got double Eagle Scouts versus single Archer Range and single Barracks. Which is better, I don't know. Uh, my gut, after seeing so many games with the Strike the Eagle Wars, is that Double Barracks is better. But I'm not exactly sure. What is going to be the third military building for Leary? Well, his third military building apparently is Blacksmith right now. If you know what I mean. That's how we're going to come up on the gold. And then I'm just going to move away. I'm going to try to get as many shots off with the uh, men at arms as with the, uh, the on the Eagle Scouts as possible. And let's see. Okay, Cloud's going to take that fight. Not surprising. Kind of surprised Leary took that fight, though. Um, Leary's gonna have to add another military production building. Two, two barracks not gonna cut it. Run, run. Run. And here we go. Walk. Now, no fletching in quite yet. The barracks, the blacksmith hasn't really been a priority for Cloud. It was more of a priority getting that extra barracks up. Yeah, I'm just I'm liking this double barracks play much better. I feel like these archers are definitely not going to be effective. You need fletching anyway for archers to be really effective. Not really doing too much damage at all. Late horse collar from Leary. I have to point it out. I'm sorry. I have to point it out. It's a mistake. All right, so what I'm learning from the uh, the new meta of these Meso civilizations is don't make archers, make uh, make eagles. They're stronger. Unless you have a lot of men at arms, that's 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 the caveat. You need the archers for the men at arms. 
But if your better arms mutually destruct, then you just go eagles. Forging being done. Man, I don't think they're gonna run past the town center, are they? All right. Forging's done already, though, so these guys can do a lot of damage. And quick walls, quick walls, quick walls, quick walls, quick walls! Why do you go with the house? Go with the palisade! Jesus. Oh, man. Actually, oh, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Tough villager. Nice defense from Cloud. That could have been a lot worse. That is a lot of gold. What? Holy crap. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 villagers on gold in the feudal age? And you're not making archers. What the heck? What is this game? I'm just so amazed at how much, um, how much the meta has changed. God. I, I think it's, I think it's for the better, though. I mean... I mean, this could be the new play style. Ah, it's so hard to say. So hard to say. It shouldn't be that the only uh, viable unit is the Eagle Warrior. That's just my only concern. The the problem is that there's not really a huge great counter to the Eagle Warrior though. The, the counter should be the men at arm should be the counter to the Eagle Warrior. If you have the men at arm counter the Eagle Warrior, then you have the Archer counter the men at arm, and then you go from there. So perhaps maybe the Eagles are a little bit too strong. Either way, Leary's up to the next age. Very good uptime for him. Cloud's also up to the next age. His tower not going to do too much. It's just eagles. They're pretty good at resisting arrow fire. Oh, uh, Zooey Howl. I think the Koreans have a better tower rush, but the Incos are a better sieve. Um, the good thing about the Incas, though, is that... Um, you have more than one option than going for the Tower Rush. Koreans, you really expect the Tower Rush, so therefore you defend against it. The Incas, you could go uh, Militia, Men at Arms, or do a Tower Rush. Uh, all part of the meta. So for that reason, I think the Inca Tower Rushes are going to be a little more successful. But not necessarily better. Anyway, it's going to be full Eagles play this game. I don't see any room for a transition to any other unit. We could potentially see the long swordsman coming out a little later, or a little bit of a mix. It looks like uh, Lear's adding a few, uh, a few men at arms into the mix. And Cloud's just gonna stick to his hill for now. Right now, military count 20, 24 to twenty. We had a faster age up from Leary as well, so Leary can take the hill. I feel he's got the military numbers. He's gonna have the upgrades. If he takes this hill, it's automatic game over. Does Leary know that? Does he know that he's four military ahead? And will he be in by the time those upgrades kick in? Alright, let's see. He's got the top of the hill. Cloud can easily come over to over here well, where he'll have the top of the hill. Gonna take that fight. No upgrades are done. There's a huge difference between the Eagle War and the Eagle Scout. Well, actually, it's a pretty small difference. It's 5 HP. And yeah, okay, that wasn't really that much of a difference. It's literally just 5 HP. It's one Pierce armor. We don't care about that, really. Um, the attack is the same. However, those men at arms are doing significantly more damage, though. They do get a bonus attack versus Eagles, and that's it. That's GG. Gonna be able to retake that hill. And GG. I'll see you guys in game four. Hello, everyone. Welcome to game four in this matchup between Cloud and Leary. We're having Ethiopians Magyars matchup this game on a dry like Arabia. In the bottom right corner, we have Leary playing as the Magyars. In the top left corner, we have 
Cloud playing as the Ithiopians. Nice. Take a quick look at their maps. Cloud, gold on the bottom side. Oh my god, that's such an ugly, ugly gold. So close to Leary, and it's uh, very exposed. Fairy's exposed. And it's okay, Woodline. I would take that wood there. Um, very poor map from Cloud. Leary's map, nice wood line, nice gold. Decent second wood line. He's never gonna find those sheep though. And stones are exposed. So much better map from Leary. Hope he finds those sheep. Let's talk a little bit about the Civ matchup. We have a Magyars versus Ethiopian Civ matchup. Uh, the Magyars best known for their scout rush. Um, cheaper scouts, they get the forging automatically, but they could also do a mean um, militia rush or a dark aid or a uh, men at arms rush with the extra forging coming in immediately. Not that it matters too much, but they can forward and kill the kill the wolves. I feel like I probably should mention that. Pretty insignificant. Going on to later in the game, they'll get the free iron casting on their knights, and uh, if they make it to Imperial Age, then they'll have super strong cavalry archers. A very good, uh, very good rush civ, very good open Arabia civilization. They play a lot like the Huns. The Ethiopians, on the other hand, extra 100 food, 100 gold when they reach the next age. That is an incredibly strong bonus, especially when going straight up to the feudal age. It means they can have a very strong drush or a very strong men at arms rush. And uh, transition to archers nice and easy. Their archers fire faster and they also get free halberd to your upgrade. So uh, knights, not probably not going to be. Knights will have a have a little bit of a counter there. Overall, I like the Ethiopians. I think the Ethiopians are one of the best Arabia civilizations. Uh, the Magyars are working on me a little bit though. We've seen a lot of good games with them. And in this particular matchup, I would say more more or less even. I don't know which civilization I would prefer in this particular matchup. We'll have to see how the game goes. At 100 food, 100 gold bonus, so that's really the best bonus out of any of these bonuses. And just to put, put that into perspective, you save about, um, I don't know, you save 8 to 10 food for each scout. It would take you a lot of scouts for you to be able to save 200 resources, which is what the Ethiopians get as soon as they can hit the feudal age. Very early walling from Leary. Don't know what that says about uh, his strategy. Some of the options for him. Um, thinking about it. Grush, men at arms. Now we're mentioning he did have a good map, so I'm expecting more of a defensive play style. He can go into single stable scouts and then go for a fast castle. Uh, or he could go for the Dark Age rush straight into archers. So we'll have to see what he does. And a lot of early walling from Cloud as well. Hmm. Kind of walling out his gold though, I must say. What, what gold is uh, Cloud planning on using? It's not going to be his main gold. Checking his point of view, he's barely scouted this gold in the back. His other gold's pretty far forward, so Cloud must be planning on using this uh, gold in the back. He's going to wall out his main gold. And those are, that's a pretty significant investment early on in the game. This is one villager that's going to be idle for the majority of the game. Might as well be dead. So both players probably going to play more defensive. Here comes the barracks. Seven minutes. Probably going to be a man at arms rush. Take a look at Leary. Leary's going to loom and go up on 21 population. Which is more common for a scout rush. And there we go, Leary advancing to the next age. He's got two nice wood lines though. I mean, that's not something you see very often. Where is the stable going to go up when it goes up though? I guess right here, walling through here. Is the left side wallable? It is kind of wallable. Uh, well, not really. No. So I'm wondering, as far as Leary's concerned, will he uh, transition to archers or skirmishers later on in the game? That's what I'm most interested in. He's actually going to be able to build his military buildings this way. It's definitely going to be an easier wall, so I, I like that decision. And yeah, here he goes. Any militia for Cloud? 
He's already up to the next age. And there we go. Oh, what is this wall? Would have been easier to wall like this. Single militia only. Where's the rest of the militia? One gold. Ow. The nice thing about the Ethiopians, we're gonna, um, they tend re to really like that Metal Arms Rush to do that extra 100 food, 100 gold. Um, how many, um, what do the Men at Arms cost? They cost food and gold, so that works really well for them. Take a shot every time I say Men at Arms. I really like Men at Arms. Men at Arms. Here we go, three militia and upgrade will come in. And stable out. What is. Th what the hell is this? Jesus. What in the world is Leary doing? This makes no sense to me. And it makes no sense to Cloud either, because Cloud is not expecting this. Why would you go three villagers forward with no defense at all against a player that you know is going to make men at arms? That makes no sense to me, but it's going to work, because this tower is going to get up. And in fact, this archer range may not get up. But probably can still build it from this corner. And that makes no sense to me, but uh, power got up. Very sneaky. And there we go. How effective is that tower? I don't know. Cloud's already given up on this gold. He gave up on that gold a long time ago. It's not like Leary's gaining that much from me. He's taken out his opponent off of berries. And oh god, those berries were uh, were really <laughs> important, actually. He's stuck on 49 food. Exactly 49 food. Oh my god, this is detrimental. This is so bad. No, re really, think about this. There's no food income coming right now. There's... Clyde has got to go behind at least five villagers here. With an idle TC. There's no other way. Say this... Who knew berries were so important? Who knew? God, that tower could be GG right there. These uh, these scouts already have forging on them. They're pretty deadly. Six attack. At the very least, uh, Cloud has uh, geared his economy up to make archers pretty efficiently. So both these archer ranges will be working at full capacity. Here comes a villager out finally. Fury's already ahead by five villagers. And Leary's still keeping him busy, which is exactly what he wants. Leary gonna go up with the archer range, so... Not gonna play it too greedy. He could honestly try to play it greedy, though. I mean... And maybe not, because Leary's got a lot of army. Idle TC once again. Those, those farmers do their job. And now, almost seven villagers behind the cloud. Let's see, we got uh, only a single spearman in the mix. Uh, probably take about five scouts to clean this up. And we have six with forging. But maybe not in the, maybe not in the, in the shallows. All right, just wait for them to come out a little bit. They're gonna stick to the shallows. What are you doing with the skirmishers? And there you go. Kill the Spearman first. Spearman is down. This is going to be a huge win for Leary. I think this is going to be a very short game. That's going to be an absolutely huge win. And all the military is down. It's now 8 to 7. That's finally got his economy back on track. It's gonna be a while before he affords Fletching. Fletch Let's just show you the power a single tower can have in this game. A single well placed tower. And that's literally all Leary did. He came forward, placed this one tower, went back with his villagers. It was completely worth it.
thing is, Leary probably doesn't know how worth it it was. It's really hard to tell if you're at that villager advantage. If your opponent stop making villagers. Another nice play. These, these uh, scouts will be in if we don't see some sort of quick gate or some walling behind this. Yeah, that house is not getting up. A lot of archers for Cloud, though. That's the one good thing that he's got going for him. And Fletching's already done. However, look at the investment for Leary and look at the investment for Cloud. Cloud has been consistently on two archery ranges, while Leary's only pumping from a single archery range. Which means that Leary can save all that extra wood and add a lot more farms. And it's a bit of a bad fight for Leary. He lose most of the scouts in the town center. And sure, Cloud can push out right now, but uh, Leary should have enough skirmishers by the time the archers get back, and Leary's up to the next age. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Nothing's going to happen in the meantime. Kind of interesting stable coming up from Cloud. I wonder if this is for knights or for scouts. It's got to be for knights, isn't it? Pew pew. And honestly, I don't, I don't think that makes too much sense. What uh, Cloud is doing, Cloud doesn't have any scouting information right now. He's guessing. He's guessing that Leary's uh, got double stable uh, skirmisher production. And he's made tons of skirmishers. And that's, of course, wrong. Leary's going to go uh, double stable knights. And it's kind of a double whammy because the Ethiopians are not a knight civilization. They don't get bloodlines. They're definitely an archer civilization. They get an archer bonus. So they're not using their strength. And then the Magyars have some really good cavalry with that X that... Uh, with the bloodlines and the iron casting for free. So Cloud is running into the Magyar strike. Well, let's see if we see the Insta, Insta GG as soon as the next stage goes up. No, Cloud's gonna get up to the next stage first. These archers are pretty dead. Uh, not, not only because a lot of them are going down to the skirmishers, but uh, we're gonna see knights coming out pretty shortly. And this is kind of crazy how much value that Leary has uh, gotten out of this. In fact, he doesn't. his knights don't have to go there right now. They could go forward right now and try to do some damage. I think the Ethiopians get Camel, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be GG right there. Um, just really, this tower making the big difference in this game. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next series.